Hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be upgrading our QNAP NAS drives, that's two drives, with 10 GBE, and this is a 10 GBE adapter card, and there's plenty of them out there. This one in particular also has two M.2 slots for SSDs. Now, there are two variations of this card. There's the 2S and the 2P, and the difference there is one of them sports NVMe at the cost of 10 GBE performance. You don't get 10 GBE, you get 8 GBE, and this one supports SATA, which means slower SSD performance, but you get the maximum throttle of 10 GBE. All right, I hope you understood that. For me, I've already got M.2 NVMe support in my big gigantic NAS, so I opted for the SATA version, but just think about which one you wanna use in your case. But in general, we're gonna be showing you how to upgrade these NAS drives. This guy over here, the big guy, and also this little guy over here, and the great thing about QNAP NAS drives, even the little ones, even this little baby one, it has a PCIe port you can upgrade your device to. But there is one thing you should be aware of, hard drive performance is relative to CPU performance. That's right. So this Celeron based NAS drive, the best I can get performance wise for a RAID 0 4 bay is around 5 GBE. However, the big guy with a 4 bay RAID 0, I was getting the full throttle 10 GBE experience. 5 GBE is still better than 1 GBE or 2 GBE, which is what you get out of the box with one of these. So I still do recommend upgrading it, even if you have a little guy, because you will get much faster speeds. You will no longer be constrained by 1 GBE, but be aware if you want the maximum full throttle speed, you're gonna need a newer NAS drive with a more capable CPU. And I've got a full video lined up on RAID, CPU, performance, all that kind of stuff in the description below. So make sure you check that one out if you're interested. But for now, let's jump in there and let's upgrade these NAS drives and show you how it's done. Guys, in this video, I'll be showing you QNAP's QM2 2S10G1TA. What that means is it supports two M.2 slots and 10 GBE. Now this configuration makes your SSDs run slightly slower to get the most out of the 10 GBE port, which is probably the best configuration to get because if you've got super fast SSDs but slow connectivity, then it won't go as fast. So this is probably the best bang for buck you can get. There you have it here. Beautiful, tiny, mini PCIe device. Inside you get two different grills depending on the kind of device you're gonna install it onto. You also get thermal pads, screws, and a rubber pad. Now to open the case, you just pull it back and then you lift to the sides and upwards and it just comes out. So now in order to get access to this PCIe slot, you'll need a short screwdriver or if you have a long one like me, you need to move the power supply out of the way temporarily. So let's unscrew it. I'm going to be installing it on the bottom PCI slot because I only need the mini PCIe and I want to keep the full length one for another device in future. And it's also easier to reach with my screwdriver. I'll then select the appropriately sized bracket, so it's this one. Align the holes and just screw it back in place so that it's nice and snug. All right, now that that's installed, I can slot it in. And you just need to apply pressure on the left here and pressure on the top bit until it slides in. Then screw the bracket into the case, put the power supply back in place. Now, after an upgrade, before closing the box up, a good idea is always just to turn the unit on just to make sure it's running fully fine and everything looks okay before closing it back up with the lid. So that's what I'm gonna do just now. Go. Seems to be powering on. And wearing away. So it looks like we've just made a successful upgrade. So I'm going to turn the system back off 
and put the lid back on and then connect to our new 10 GBE M.2 enabled QNAP NAS drive. Shutting down. First, let's unscrew the screws on the case. Take this lid off, then round the back, you push down and pull. And it comes off to the right like that. And that's it right there, that's the slot for the PCIe. So first, let's unscrew this current one. Then we need to make sure we have the correct bracket on our PCIe adapter. So it looks like this is the one we need to install. Align the holes and re-screw it back in. Now this heatsink also comes off to install an M.2 SSD. That exposes our N.2 SATA ports, and you can put in your SSDs there. So now all I'm gonna do is slot this PCI board into that PCI slot just there, and then screw it in. The case just slots right back in, then you push it forward to lock it into place. And you finish the job by screwing the screws back into the case. And there you go. Job complete. You got your 10 GBE adapter plugged in. Now once it's plugged in, you can go ahead and go to install.qnap.com or use your smartphone to scan this QR code. However, what I like to do is just wait a little while, then cycle through the ports and I can see I've got a new adapter for IP and if you can't display the IP address, so on Mac I use a free tool called Discovery and I can see that it's 169.254.7.62. And it gives me all the IP addresses that are connected to my computer. So I can easily fish out which one is QNAP and connect to it directly in the web browser. On Windows, if you go into File Explorer, it should just be listed right there. So on Windows, inside File Explorer, you should be able to just go into Network and see your QNAP device. So for example, for me, QCairo over there, and it logs me straight in on the web. If it's not listed there, you can use a free tool, which requires Java, Angry IP Scanner, and I'll tell you all the IP addresses on your network. So after installing Java, go into control panel and just search for Java up there. See Java 32-bit. And then you want to go into the update settings and disable check for updates automatically to stop that annoying prompt that it kind of gives you. I also disable Java content for browsers because that is uh, just going to slow down your computer to be honest. What website uses Java in today's era? None. So we just hit start and it will go through all the IP addresses to let you know which ones are active. So for me, it completed it in 17 seconds, and if you just sort by ping, which is a response, you'll see all the IP addresses that are connected onto your network, including this one's my NAS 102. And you can connect to it, or you can go into command prompt, type in this little command, and it will list again all the IP addresses on your network. I personally like doing it manually, but you can of course use the software that QNAT give you out of the box. And that's it, you launch the web browser, Advanced, proceed. System detected that your DNS could not be resolved. That's because I'm connected directly to my computer. First thing I'm gonna do is go into network. So drag that in over here, tap on that. And look at it there. We have a new adapter for 10 GBE. Now what you should also do is go into configure and select jumbo frame as 9000. So you just wait a little while for it to disconnect and reconnect and now you're in and we fully set up 10 GBE with jumbo frames.
What you also need to do is go into System Preferences, Network, and select the connected 10GBE. And instead of making it automatic, select Manual and set the MTU again to 9000 over here. Over on Windows, just go into Settings, then Network, and then you gotta select Change Adapter Options. Then you'll see a new Ethernet connection and go into properties. Whoa, where do we go? Configure and then advanced and somewhere here we're gonna find jumbo frames. There you go, jumbo packet. And you wanna set that to 9K and that will be 9,000 bytes. Once you do that, it will disconnect and reconnect. Okay, let's see if we have any performance improvements. Again, 250 write and just over 400 read. So we can see we're getting about the same write performance as before, 240 megabytes a second. And reading slightly slower than before. Hard drive performance is relative to CPU performance. That's right, so this Celeron based NAS drive, the best I can get performance wise for a RAID 0 4 bay is around 5 GBE. However, the big guy with a 4 bay RAID 0, I was getting the full throttle 10 GBE experience. So for a single hard drive, you're gonna be getting around 200 write and 300 read. When you start upgrading it to RAID 0, you're gonna be getting between 500 to 1000 megabytes a second, depending on your CPU. All right, hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, leave a comment in the comment section below and I hope you enjoyed the show.